morning school class 9a is blessed to conduct this morning assembly please join us in singing hymn number 89 to be found on page number 69 <laughs> according to the grace given to each of us if your gift is prophesying then prophesy in accordance with your faith if it is serving then serve if it is teaching then teach if it is to encourage then give encouragement if it is giving then give generously if it is to lead do it diligently if it is to show mercy do it cheerfully The third Bible reading is taken from Book of James, chapter one, verse seventeen. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. The fourth Bible reading has been taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter five, verse fourteen to sixteen. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. 
Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The fifth Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, 25, verse 29. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. A talent is something that you are instinctually born with, that gives you unique skills and abilities. Talent is set apart from knowledge in that it is not a learned behavior, although it can be strengthened and practiced. The Bible tells us that we are all born with distinct talents and gifts that set us apart from each other. When you discover the talents that God has given you, and use them to glorify Him, then you can live a full life. Then you will live a whole and complete life. God wants us to feel whole and complete, and it is through talent that we can find a unique calling in life. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us the most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, fabulous, and talented? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. At times, we do not realize our capabilities and are not able to capitalize on them. It could be because some of us haven't got the foggiest idea of our talent and ourselves. We hide ourselves in boxes made by others due to various reasons. We force ourselves to stay stagnant in our comfort zone and are afraid to change for fear of what could happen. Our brains are trained to keep us safe, so we stay in our comfort zone instead of facing the unknown. If you stay in your comfort zone, you're less likely to follow through on reaching your goals. Your fear, procrastination or any other excuse keeps you from reaching to your goals. It's great to be back again. I have come here to settle accounts for the talents which I gave to my servants. Please inform them to meet me in the evening. Greetings Master, it's a pleasure to have you back. I am fortunate to have you as my master. Look, you gave me five talents. I've used the talents wisely and sincerely. 
I have put it for a good use. Here, I have earned five more talents. This is what belongs to you. Thank you for trusting me. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I have set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Your honesty has been rewarded. Thank you, master. Thank you, master, for entrusting me with two talents. I work diligently to make use of this wonderful opportunity. You delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. It was a wonderful experience working diligently to make two more talents. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I have set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Your honesty has been rewarded. Thank you, master. Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. I hid myself in a box because I was confused and could not decide what to do with one talent. You wicked and slothful servant! You knew that uh, that I sow where I am not and gather where I started no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. Now take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. They say there are three types of people. The first type are the people who are not related to us, but they love to judge us because they want to find faults and put us down. We do listen to their negative comments. We do believe them instead of believing ourselves, since we are not confident enough. Those voices keep echoing in our minds. We get hopeless, nervous, and lose our self-esteem and start believing the same. This dopamine effect leads to a this leads to a domino effect and hence we close ourselves in some type of box because of them. There are others who are related to us in some way. They show that they want to help us, but behind our backs, they are the ones who talk negatively about us. Somehow, we come to know about their criticism and derogatory behavior. Still, instead of believing in ourselves, we affirm to what they are saying. The third kind of people are those who close themselves in some type of box on their own. They have been rejected multiple times and are going through rough times in life due to unjust and indifferent treatment from their own relatives. Like Simba in the movie Lion King, he has been forced to run away. He, even though Nala tries very hard. Some type of people are like, uh, even though Nala tries very hard, but Simba does want to come back because of the treatment received by his uncle Scar. Um, they are. Uh, they have a very low self-esteem of themselves, and finally, shut themselves in some type of boxes. Today, we would like to make an attempt to give a message to each one of us. Do not fall into temptation when your mind gives you negative signals that you cannot do it. Instead, feed it with I can and I will. Do not listen to toxic and negative people who belittle and scandalize you. Instead, stay focused and concentrate on your success. Do not lose yourself in a box because of what others think about you. The good news is that there is always light at both ends of a tunnel. So when you are in a tunnel of darkness, keep walking towards the light. We earnestly feel that our assembly <coughs> will encourage you to unbox yourself even when you are going through the darkest of days. Class 9 will now present Unbox Yourself.
Hello, I am a jewelry box. I'm used to store and protect valuable jewelry items. Jewelry can easily get scratched, you know, tangled or lost, especially if it's not organized properly. I provide a designated space for each piece, preventing it from getting damaged or misplaced. I also come with compartments that allows human beings to keep their jewelry separated. I keep very expensive and precious items made up of gold and silver. Highly expensive, so I play an important role. I'm greatly privileged as I'm able to help a lot of people to store their expensive and precious items. I am a tool box. I contain various types of tools like hammer, screwdrivers, knives and other tools. <laughs> you can always see me at construction site. I contain very useful tools that make me more valuable. I am privileged to help people in different ways. It's an honor for me. I see different types of people every day and I am always in demand for maintenance and repair work. I am grateful to the person who made me in such a way that I can help so many people at a time all over the world. I am an organizer box. I offer several benefits. Firstly, I allow for quick and easy storage of tools and other items of various sizes, shapes and configuration. Secondly, I help in organizing and protecting the tools, reducing stress on cords and preventing loss or damage. People also use me to store their clothes, hats, belts and other accessories. It's a privilege for me that I can help people learn how to organize their things neatly and efficiently. I am a matchbox made of cardboard or thin wood. I usually have a coarse striking surface on the side of the matchbox. A safety match can only light up when someone strikes it against a striking surface on the side of the matchbox. What in order to help people every morning to prepare their meal, I am found in every kitchen all over the world, which makes me very valuable. I am a maker boss. I am very helpful, especially to females. They always carry me and cannot complete their work without me. I travel with them to every part of the world. I am very important as I get a lot of attention. I usually contain a large number of articles and help people look good. I am glad that somebody invented me and today I am able to help a large number of people. I am always happy to help a large number of people. I am a pencil box. Sometimes I am also referred to as a pencil case. I store a variety of other stationary items such as sharpeners, erasers, pens, glue sticks, scissors and rulers. The most important asset which I store is a pencil which is used for educational applications for writing, drawing and note taking. They form the backbone of educational tools for students of all ages. I don't know who made me. But it's a great privilege to be a pencil. Although at times it's tough for me because they keep sharpening me. But when I see a lot of sheets written through me, I forget all that pain. Hey, we all have introduced ourselves. I know we all are very important. Human beings have invented and developed us for various uses. Thank God that we can be used by them. I think it's a great privilege to help people in their rough and difficult times. Hey, did anyone notice what's in that box? Let me check. Who are you? What are you doing here? You look different from us. Will you introduce yourself? Why are you in this box? You look somewhat like a human being. You're not meant to be in this box. What happened? Did someone put you here? Or are you here of your own will? Yes, you are right. I am a human being. I used to work with my colleagues for the same master. He is a very stern and a hard person. He entrusted me and my friends with different number of talents. He gave five talents to the first person, two talents to the second person. Although he said he trusts me, I think he didn't trust me enough. That's why he only gave me one talent. But why are you in that lunchbox? It's beginning time. Students are not going to school and that box was the only empty box. I think you must have utilized it in the right way. So, what did you do with that one talent? I did not know what to do with that one talent. I felt depressed and disheartened. I deserved more. I served him for so many years but still he only gave me one talent. I lost my confidence and self-esteem. I did not feel like working. At times I felt useless worthless and confused. Then, what happened when your master returned? Did he ask you to give an account of any talents you used? How you used them? Upon his arrival, 
He summoned me to set his accounts, but I was not able to use their talent in a purposeful manner. So he threw me out and took up his talent. Now I have nowhere to go. So I thought of hiding myself in that box. Oh really? But I think everything does not happen the way we want them to happen. The master must have given the talent according to your capability. Now what can I do? I can't go back to the master. I think what went wrong was that you, out of fear, were not able to realize the potential of that talent. What makes gold the most expensive metal? Its formation is a tough process and it has to go through heat and pressure to come out in its best form and to be used as jewelry. Maybe your master was testing you. Maybe he had plans to promote you and give you bigger responsibilities. That's why he only stuck with one talent. The pencil that I have in this box has to be sharpened every time to be used. It makes your sheets look neat and tidy. A sharpened pencil gives a good handwriting. I go through that pain every time. I think the master had plans to give you the best, but it may be that before he wanted to test your capabilities. If you could have overcome your fear, the master would have entrusted you with a larger inheritance. I know I am a toolbox, but I am of great use. That is the only talent I have. I love to serve people and I am glad I have been made that way. Every time somebody is in trouble due to fault or failure, I am always there to help. I am ready to solve the problems as many times as I can and so I get more importance. If that talent would have been put into good use, then you would have also become a pertinent member of your master's business. It's something that you can learn from me. My tools are my permanent members. Congratulations to you on the launch of your new book. It has become one of the most popular books and has brought laurels to you. What if your next book does not get that much popularity? Will you continue to write? Yes, now there is no stopping me. I have been writing for the last six years and now I have got the recognition. I use my talent and here I am today. So let me tell you, do not give up. Have you seen those scores of edges on my sides? People use me every time they light up a matchstick. Can you imagine how many sticks are there in one box? I have to go through the pain every single time a matchstick is rubbed against my course. But I am happy to bear that pain because it lights someone else for and that is the only thing I can do. So don't put yourself in this box. Thank you all for motivating me. I know I will regret this one in my life. But I cannot get that one talent back. But I have learned that whatever we have been given you must make sure to use it in, in the right manner. I know there are many talented people here. Make the best use of it at the right time. Surely you will reach your goals and get success.
we learned some notes yesterday and we carry on from there learn more notes and practice more I think that's enough for today. You may leave for now. See you tomorrow. We both live in the same neighborhood and study together. We visited each other every day. Then one day, I saw him playing the keyboard. Soon, I developed an interest in learning music. I requested my parents if I could learn the keyboard with him. That sounds interesting. So, your parents must have allowed you. Yes, they did. Soon, they realized my inherent talent. I was born with that talent. I was catching up with music at an unbelievable pace. I know you are talented, but it does require a lot of hard work, time, sincerity, and perseverance to nurture your talent as well. You have worked very hard to develop this talent. How many hours do you practice in a day? That is where I went wrong. I had the talent with lots of potential. I was capable. The master interested me with only one talent. I did not nurture my talent. I missed the opportunity. I was scared of my master, and I misunderstood him. I am not worthy of this talent. Now I have understood that my master wanted me to understand, to take a small step, and then if I pass it, he would have given me a greater responsibility. Thank you all once again. Yes, I do practice a lot now, but things were not always easy. I wanted to be a musician. I got an opportunity as well, but after the auditions, I was rejected. Nobody liked my compositions. I was told to learn and practice more. Every time I went for auditions, I was rejected. There was a time when I was so depressed that I put myself into a box like many of you. But still, there was hope. We were going through tough times. I think it was not his time to shine, but two years back, luckily, a music company called us and we were able to compose music from them. Now that he's a successful music director, he's still attached to his roots. The students you saw belong to poor sections of the society. He teaches them and does not charge anything from them. This way, he is using his talent in the purposeful manner. Let's acknowledge our talents and use those talents wisely and honestly to bring happiness all over the world. Believe me, you can definitely make the world a better and a happier place when you use your talents wisely.
Class 9A girls will now present a dance. Some of our classmates will now present a song.
Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for blessing me with amazing talent. These talents were given by you, and my heart's desire is to use them as you intend them to be used. Forgive me for the time I wasted waiting for the perfect moment before I got started. Help me now as I step out in faith to start using these talents in a way that will benefit those around me. I know that your talents have power, so as I release these precious treasures, I ask that your power will also be released to meet the needs of the people whose lives are touched by you. Today, I willingly recognize the talents you have placed inside me and make the choice to let these talents begin to benefit others through me. We ask for this in your name. Amen. In conclusion, Class 9, I would like to express the gratitude to Mr. Tyndale and Mr. Ratcliffe for giving us this opportunity to put up this assembly. We hope that we were able to convey our message efficiently. We would also like to thank Mr. Gailey and Mr. Godson for the music, Ms. Sharma for helping us with the dance, Mr. Craig Tyndale and the control room monitors for the technical assistance, Ms. Mark and the hall room monitors, Mr. James and his team for the videography and Mr. Roy Chaudhary for the photography, all the teachers who generously gave up their lessons so that we could practice for this assembly. At last, we would like to express a heartfelt gratitude to our class teacher, Mr. Mundell, for his unwavering support and guidance, without whose help we would have not been able to put up this assembly. Now, I would like, I would like to hand over the rest of the proceedings to our principal, Mr. Dindin. Sir.